But today we're going to talk about rebuilding a clutch slave cylinder in a Triumph TR6. Now my channel is about documenting things that are not in the manual and things I had to relearn. I haven't rebuilt a slave cylinder for, for quite, uh, quite a while. And, uh, and so um, I'll just document the stuff that uh, I learned. Uh, uh, first thing uh, is that uh, you notice that this is, there are aftermarket ones. Uh, this one says Lockheed on it, so this is an original. Uh, it, it appears to be the original. Um, it's uh, cast iron. Um, when, when we got it apart, what we're going to look for when we rebuild this, these are really fairly simple, and they've got, just got a couple seals inside and a spring and a little piston. Really, what we're looking for <laughs> in rebuilding this is there's a range of travel that that seal travels back and forth inside here, and it needs to be pretty much free of pitting and wear, in the uh, in that range where it moves now you might find that there's a line around he here and a line around here where that where that um, uh, that seal has gone back and forth over the years but as long as it's pretty good in this area right in here uh, you'll be okay so you can have some pitting you can have some problems down here you can have some pitting and problems up here but as long as you're good in that range of travel here uh, you're all right. If you don't want to take a chance on it, because I don't know what the measurement is. I, I looked and I couldn't figure out exactly what the measurement was between, uh, you know, where, where, does it, where is it supposed to stop? I guess you can pretty much feel it from the little ridge. Uh, and where I went by is I could feel a little ridge here. I could feel a little ridge here. I could see some evidence of it because there's going to be some black gooey stuff in here when you take it apart or a black coating like a paint inside from old dried flu hot fluid um so I, I basically i said you know what that what looks like the range in here looks pretty good this didn't leak also uh, when it was in the car it worked okay so i'm going to just assume that mine that, that uh, if i can clean it up if i can if i can uh, hone it uh, and get it cleaned up uh, pretty good if i don't see anything really bad that i can go ahead and reuse it if you if you don't feel comfortable with that, I wouldn't buy the the rebuild kit and then uh, and and then go ahead and buy a new one. But these are like forty eight dollars, so I thought well, I, I I think I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild it. Along with rebuilding it, what you get in the kit. So so what you get is you get a kit like uh, this. I've already put it in at this point, but what it has in that kit it has the the uh, it has the uh, dust cover. That's that's this part. Then inside it has a uh, it has a, a chrome piston. Uh, that's not in the kit. That's just comes with it. What's in the kit also is a seal, uh, and you know the cup goes uh, the open end of the cup goes that way. It has a hard plastic um, bit on the end of there that fits into the seal. Then it has a spring, um, and, and that just goes into the into the slave cylinder. What comes in the kit? that you care about is this dust cover and this seal. The rest of it is reuse from your own. Uh, some other things that we were gonna talk about is um, you, you may need a hone to, uh, you're gonna need a hone with about 400 grit. This is the one I have, I forget where I bought it. Uh, it's got 400 grit stones. It also comes with some 220 uh, grit stones. The size of this was for half inch to two and a quarter. I don't remember which project I bought that for. Um, uh, and then the other thing that you can buy if you want is you can buy um, a, this is the kit of all the replacement hardware. Now you may not need to buy all the nuts and bolts, right? But what you do want to buy is this uh, clevis pin. So here's the, uh, here's the original one. You can see that the, uh, the rubber is crap was literally falling apart here um, in trouble uh, and if you look at the uh, look at the the clevis pin you can see it's worn in the slot let's take that off of there See the pin itself is worn pretty badly, and you can see that uh, 
see that wear in the slot that I was uh, talking about this one it's it's ovaled so I uh, so it causes the pin to just gives it a little extra play in there this one isn't horrible I've seen them worse because it'll get worn as you'll see uh, in ours you also there's a there's a, um, a cotter pin in there you want to replace that uh, too because uh, cotter pin you shouldn't reuse cotter pins the other thing you'll want to buy is one of these clutch slave push rods. Um, we already saw this one was worn. Um, one thing, this is the one that came, the new one that came. One thing you'll want to do is just make sure that they're uh, the same length. I've heard of people having struggle, you know, having, uh, and make sure that the one you get is the right length. Um, people sometimes they mount this on the wrong side, or they have they're trying to make up for extra travel, and they may play some games with the length of these uh, with the with the clutch slave so you'll want to buy the uh, the kit with the two seals in it with, with the rubber bits in it you want to buy you might want to buy the whole hardware you at least you want to buy the clevis and the and the cotter pin and you want to buy the clutch uh, push slave rod so um, assembly lube we talk about this later don't buy this. I bought this, checked with the manufacturer. Nope, can't use that. Um, you can, if you're going to use the car soon, you can just go ahead and assemble it with the brake fluid itself as your lubricant. You don't need to buy red rubber grease. Where you do want to have the red rubber grease is to preserve this rubber here. You want to rub it all on here to keep it from drying out and cracking over the years. So I do need to buy some red rubber grease, uh, as we'll talk about later. Um, with that, uh, there were, again, there was no instructions in the manual on how to do this. Uh, so if you appreciate this, I appreciate it encourages me to make more of these videos. If you uh, subscribe, if you like the video, if you make a comment, if you know something about this that uh, that I don't. Anyway, um, for that, so like the video, subscribe, and let's get going. Well, today we're going to uh, rebuild a Lockheed clutch slave cylinder. And, and why should I rebuild it? Why shouldn't I just buy a new one? Well, I like to rebuild if I possibly can. The rebuild kit uh, here from uh, this one's from British Parts Northwest. I was ordering some other stuff and free shipping, uh, $3.28. Uh, so anyway, so we're going to start with uh, using, a, using a hydraulics. A wrench for hydraulic fittings um, so that uh, get the right one here um, these prevent you from distorting the uh, distorting the uh, the fitting so we'll go ahead and unscrew that and notice I have the original red uh, see-through tubing on this is pretty cool so we'll go ahead and take that one off and we'll take the bleed screw off. Now uh, the challenge is, is how do you get that get the cylinder out of there? Uh, it's it's just stuck in there. I use a use some compressed air. Uh, what I'm going to do first though is I'm going to take some uh, take some brake clean and I'm going to spray it in there. Try not to spray back on myself. A little piece of green scrubby. I'm going to clean the guck out of there so that when I blow that out of there it doesn't score uh, the cylinder walls. I think I probably should have left the bleed screw in there. So we'll put that back in so that we can blow it out. Get ourselves a rag and put it, put that on this side like that to keep it from flying across the room. So that's always good. Got our compressed air here. Take it and we're going to go. See what that did. Yep, there she goes. 
right to there. There she blows. If I had not had something over that, I would have shot it right through the ceiling. It came out of there like a bat out of hell. Okay. Here's all our parts. So we'll go ahead and clean all this up and, uh, and we'll rebuild it. So we can see some built up crud in there. I put some light three in one oil in there and now I'm going to uh, take a 400 grit hone and uh, hone the inside of that and see if I can't clean it up a little bit. Hard to see with the camera in there. You can still feel the slightest line way down deep in there. But it uh, wasn't leaking before, so I'm going to give it a try. I'll clean it out thoroughly with brake clean, um, get all that oil out of there, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So on everything cast iron on the engine, I'm using VHT engine enamel cast iron uh, paint, and, and the instructions say to bake it for an hour at 200 degrees. This is my, my baking arrangement. You can see that it's plugged in, and there's a this is a welding blanket, so it's fireproof. And with a infrared gun, you can see uh, I got the part, and there's my uh, cylinder. I'm, I'm uh, about one one uh, seventy to two, uh, close to two hundred. Um, so that's my uh, my baking arrangement. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and rebuild this thing. And uh, here's the old seal, and uh, it's it's still not in bad shape. It's got some, still got some little bit of rust, rust on it, uh, but it wasn't cracked. It wasn't uh, any problems. Um, we've cleaned up all the threads on these guys, inside and out, with the wire wheel. We've cleaned up the bore. Still has a little pitting on the on on the first uh, the first. You know bit and in deep in but i think the area that it actually moves is uh is pretty clean we're going to give it a try before we uh, buy another one um, i've cleaned up the spring this plastic piece um as well it stays with it it just uh, removes like that uh, i cleaned up the uh, the piston you might recognize that side uh, dremel wire wheel inside here and then uh, this was had a bunch of black uh, hardened goo on it. Uh, I cleaned that up with uh, crocus cloth, uh, and then I simichromed it afterwards, and then cleaned it all with bright clean. Um, so uh, this is what comes in the kit, and uh, this one and this one I think go to a different model. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild it now. It used to be that uh, when you bought this these things in the packet would come a uh, little tube of assembly, red rubber grease, red assembly grease. They didn't come with that. I'm just going to go ahead and use, I'm going to switch to dot five. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and use brake fluid as my assembly lube. And I've got a uh, little Tupperware here to contain it. So uh, let's get started. So everything is spotlessly clean. 
with uh, with brake clean. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and this goes in like that. The but we'll, what we'll do is first is uh, take a little bit of the dot five and pour it in there. And meticulously clean fingers. I'm not worried about my hand as much as I am worried about the uh, with dot five as I am with about the uh, the uh, break the cylinder itself keeping it clean so uh, go ahead and lube that up and then uh, put this guy just drop him in there like this now we want to make sure we lube this up good and there's plenty on my hand still so it's all nice and lubed and the uh, the opening the cup goes in so uh, the cup goes in like this. Just gonna pop it in there. And we'll put just a tad more of this in there. And I think we're at the point where we need to uh, be over the uh, uh, Tupperware. Then we're gonna drop um, Okay, get everything all lubed up, drop that in. I do need to cover the dot five thing too. Um, dot five was a problem on uh, seals made back in the early, early days, way before, but anything in my opinion, and this is, you have to do your own research here because I don't want to be liable for your decisions. But uh, look up dot five, and you can see all kinds of um, arguments about it, one way or the other. Uh, in, in my my judgment is that uh, if I bought a new set of seals, um, brand new, they're going to be decades past when we had a problem with seals. If you really want to fool with this. I did at one time make an experiment and I took different kinds of rubber seals and I dropped them in different kinds of brake fluid because they will swell up within a couple of days of, uh, of um, if they're going to have a problem, they will swell up then. Uh, if you want to have some fun, you might do the same thing. Take some neoprene and some other things and, uh, and try dropping them in brake fluid and see what you get. This wasn't, video wasn't intended to be about brake fluid. It was intended to be about... Um, about rebuilding it so let's get back to that okay let's put this cover on the dust cover and the the pointy end goes in um, start it on the edge this might be easier to see without the black gloves yeah that may make it easier to see just kind of work away around a little bit and then I've cleaned this screwdriver off with brake clean so I'm not going to introduce any problems there just work our way around like that and we have a new uh, clutch slave rod because uh, these get worn right there as we saw just pop that in and uh, there we go one rebuilt um, slave cylinder and I think that'll uh, we'll see how that works so assembling the uh, assembling this without the grease is, is perfectly fine. I do want to put it on here and I'll get some. Uh, but um, uh, I do want to comment, it's not always a good thing to use the grease. I bought a Spitfire slave cylinder, clutch slave cylinder, and uh, I couldn't get it to work. And I couldn't get it to work. And I called uh, Spitbits is where I bought it from. And I called Nigel over there. And asked him about it. He says, oh, sometimes on the ones that have been sitting on the shelf a long, long time, the assembly grease dries and it becomes cruddy. You have to open it up, clean it out, and uh, reassemble with fluid. So uh, 
I went ahead and did that on the Spitfire one and it freed it up. So um, I just wanted to make that note on the assembly grease. So I'm going to try this. For the range of motion that it has, I think the bore is okay. Uh, if it leaks or if it doesn't release or whatever um, after being put in, I'll go ahead and replace it with the TRW branded one. This is actually more expensive than the master cylinder, uh, but I'll go ahead and get the, uh, the uh, I think it's $48, uh, but I wanted to give this a try. I've got the clutch master cylinder pulled out and it has no identifying brand on it. Uh, it just says 0.7. Now you have two options. You have a 0.7, which is the original, and some people put in a 0.75, which is available. A 0.75 gives you a little bit more piston, a uh, little bit more travel, uh, but it also uh, is harder to push a little bit. 14%, uh, I think one, one, one somebody said once, uh, and uh, and uh, anyway, I, I I will elect with all new parts in the clutch and all fixed up and with the right pressure plate. Uh, part of it is the pressure plate, right? If you have the wrong pressure plate, you need more travel. You might need the 0.75. I've got a, an original um, Borgen Beck that I'm going to be using, so I'll go with the 0.7. I will replace this one, however. This is an off-brand. Uh, it looks like the pictures on the websites. Uh, for the cheaper one, I'm going to go ahead and buy the TRW one. I don't like using... Uh, Master, the cheap master cylinders have had too many of them fail. At least it's not classic gold, as far as I can tell. So here is uh, British Parts Northwest. Um, I, although I often buy from Roadster Factory or whatever, and I just want to show you your options. Here's the generic master cylinder. Here again, we have the 0.75 uh, bore and the 0.70 bore. We already covered that. I think this is the cheaper one that I have. Uh, it looks it looks pretty much the same, and then you can get the uh, the TRW uh, branded uh, 0.70 or 0.75. It's only about six dollars difference in price, but I would go with the TRW. My understanding, though, is that the TRW uh, is not what it used to be. Uh, it has TRW on the side. I had a TRW branded Brake Master cylinder fail that I ended up having re-sleeved. I'm going to go ahead with it, but uh, you can't resleeve a uh, you can't resleeve these cheap ones. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the TRW clutch uh, master cylinder and and see if uh, see if that works out. If that fails, I'll go ahead and call Apple Hydraulics and get them to get me a sealed uh, unit too. I am not thrilled about the choice here, uh, but but I will give it one more try and that I haven't heard any complaints about these, but uh, we'll see what happens. You can also buy the, uh, the, the mounting kits and that kind of thing here. Well, thank you for watching. I, I try to cover things that aren't in the manual, and I think uh, rebuilding this was not in the manual. A lot of the things that we saw about it and what the, the kits are and the size of the bore and all that kind of thing. So if you uh, enjoyed this please uh, subscribe and like the video it uh, it encourages me uh, I also have another video on evaluating uh, a clutch in and I uh, put the link for that in that uh, has more information on uh, on the whole pressure plate uh, controversy that we talked about before thanks for watching